Love divine, all loves excelling joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us your humble dwelling, all your faithful mercies crown. Jesus, source of all compassion, love, unbounded love, all pure. Visit us with your salvation. Let your love in us In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you, Frank and Darlene, to state your intentions. Darlene and Frank, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Yes. <laughs> Are you prepared to accept children lovingly and to bring them up according to the law of Christ in his church? Let us now turn to the Lord and sing to him the great praise of his glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these, your servants, Frank and Darlene, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to God's word. A reading from the Song of Songs. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks. He says to me, Arise, my beloved, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the secret recesses of the cliff, let me see you, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and you are lovely. My lover belongs to me, and I to him. He says to me, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm. For stern as death is love, relentless as the netherworld is devotion. Its flames are a blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love, nor floods sweep it away. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. 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 Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being. Bless God's name. Bless the Lord, and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows. 
redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful, 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 and gracious is our God, slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God, you 
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Darlene and Frank, I don't know if you noticed it, but when Craig was reading the second reading and he said, wives are to be subordinate to their husbands, I saw a lot of husbands out there wake up and give their wife an elbow in the rib. It's very rare for a couple celebrating the sacrament of holy matrimony to choose that reading from the fifth chapter of Ephesians because many erroneously view it as a husband-dominant passage. Wives, subordinate to your husband. Husband, you're the head of the household. And in fact, in the three-year cycle of readings in the Catholic Church, this reading only comes once every three years, usually in the middle of January. And the same thing happens then. All the husbands suddenly wake up and give their wives an elbow. Pay attention, pay attention. But the true meaning of this passage, what St. Paul is trying to convey about marriage, is not about elevating one over the other, not that wives are to be slaves to their husbands. Rather, if you listen closely, you can hear the invitation of St. Paul to make Jesus Christ the center of one's marriage. And for that marriage relationship to flourish and grow as husband and wife serve each other as Christ has done for them. Paul's teaching in chapter 5 in his letter to the community at Ephesus, that early Christian community, is set within a larger teaching. If you continue on, you'll see in chapter 6, he talks about the relationship between children and parents slaves and masters. And in all of these, the one phrase that, that frames all these relationships is the very powerful sentence that he said even before he got into the marriage theme. Be subordinate to one another out of love for Christ. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. This mutual subordination is meant to be the very heart of the sacrament of matrimony. And wives express that differently than husbands. In fact, if you listen closely, actually the husband has the more challenging role in this subordination because he's supposed to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And we all know how Christ loved the church, right? He gave himself completely, fully on the cross, giving himself totally in love for the church. So only after Paul makes that frame of reference of being subordinate to one another does he then talk about the husband and wife and how they live out that subordination. But it's all framed in this sense that at the very center has to be the source of love, the one from whom love pours into the world and saves the world, the very Son of God. As we gather to celebrate this joyful day with Darlene and Frank, we begin to hopefully understand a little bit more the mystery of this sacrament and the power of this sacrament of marriage. 
St. Paul says it this way. He says, it reflects the mystery of Christ and the church. He doesn't say that about priesthood, doesn't say that about any other relationship. He says the love of husband and wife, when they die to their own selfishness, when they live for the other, this shows us the mystery of how Christ loves the church completely, totally, unreservedly. So when people come up to me and say, Father, it'd be great if we had more priests, more vocations to the priesthood, I say, yes, that would be great. But my response always is, what we continue to need in our world today are more couples who live out this vocation of the sacrament of matrimony, who image for the world this love of Christ. Because Darlene and Frank, as you go forth from this building, as you leave this holy place, the world you enter again is hungering to see the presence of God, is longing to see where God is at work. And it's in your relationship that you reflect this very presence of the Lord God as you love one another as his son has loved you. And you do that in very concrete ways, not in an abstract, ethereal way, but down to earth, very concrete ways of loving each other as Christ loves you. You do that when you live love that is patient. A patient love recognizes that the one I am married to is not perfect. In fact, all married couples come to know that very quickly. But because the person is not perfect that I'm married to, because they have shortcomings and faults, doesn't mean that the Lord is not calling me to love them, to give myself to them. A love that is impatient places me at the very center where I want everyone else to do what I want and to turn out my way. A love that is patient acknowledges the weaknesses of others and also acknowledges one's own shortcomings, trusting that God's love can transform all of that. A love that reflects Christ's love for the church, this self-giving sacrificial love, doesn't brood over injuries. In fact, this kind of love is a love that is fueled by forgiveness. You know, the grace-filled way that a couple grows in love with each other is to understand not only the weaknesses of the other, but also to forgive the hurts that come their way. Otherwise, that poison pill of resentment can slowly eat away like acid at one's heart and weaken the relationship. It's not easy to forgive another, especially one closest to you who hurts you, but it means sacrificing this desire to always be right, to always win the argument, to always have the last word, and instead simply humbly forgiving the other for the hurt that is inflicted. A love that is Christ-like is also kind. It's, it's understanding the needs of the other and then loving them with kindness day after day. Darlene and Frank, I don't think either one of you at this stage in your life will be able to spring across mountains or leap across hills as you go toward each other in, in love, but you can break down the barriers that sometimes arise in a relationship by the power of kindness. By each day vowing at least once today, I'm gonna do one act of kindness that lifts up my spouse. In fact, the daily act of kindness for a spouse, it lays a foundation for a solid house of love for a love that will not collapse when the storms come. This kind of love that Christ shares with you and that you, you show to the world is also not pompous or inflated. It's not about building oneself up, 
but always building up the other. This kind of love actually imitates what Jesus did at the Last Supper as he went around and got down on his knees and washed the dirty feet of his followers. It's a love that is always poured out in service, always looking to help the other. This kind of love, this Christ-like love, endures all things. It never gives up on the other. It's there through, through thick and thin, through good times and bad times. Darlene, it's like the love you've experienced from Frank already as you suffered through the death of your sister Dana, how he was there at your side during that painful time to be a sign of God's presence with you helping you to move through that sorrow. As you love Darlene and Frank in the way that the Lord invites you to love, you'll be a visible sign to us and to the world of Christ enduring love. You'll live out the sacrament of matrimony loving in this way and this very ordinary love, which is actually extraordinary, has a way of transforming the world, has a way of saying to those who doubt God's presence that God is alive, that his son lives and loves in and through you as you love one another. Frank and Darlene, since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you've declared before the church and bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. Let God join together. Let no one put asunder. Lord God, we ask that you bless and sanctify your servants, Darlene and Frank, in their love for each other. And let these rings, a sign of their faithfulness, remind them of their love for one another. Through Christ our Lord. stand now as we turn to the Lord, seeking his help for this newly married couple. For this bride and groom, and for their well-being as a family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For their relatives and friends, 
and for all who have assisted this couple, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Frank and Darlene seal their union, accept our prayer, and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. When love is found and hope comes home, sing and be glad that two are one. When love explodes and fills the sky, praise God and share our Maker's joy. When love has flowered in trust and care, built both each day that love may dare to reach beyond home's warmth and light to serve and strive for truth and right. When love is tried, as loved ones change, hold on still to hope, though all seem strange, till ease returns and love grows wise through listening ears and open eyes. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you willed that the human race created by the gift of your goodness, should be raised to such high dignity that in the union of husband and wife, you might bestow a true image of your love. For those you created out of charity, you call to the law of charity without ceasing and grant them a share in your eternal charity. And so the sacrament of holy matrimony as the abiding sign of your own love, consecrates the love of man and woman through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with blessed Stanley Rother, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now and pray together in the words our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily, daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from evil. 
As this newly married couple in Christ kneels, I invite all of you to pray for them, for God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Darlene, and upon Frank, her companion for life, and may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and to know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends and family that surrounds them today, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. For Holy Communion, the communion ministers will come to you in your pews. If you want to receive Holy Communion, you need to stand. Extend your hands, otherwise simply kneel or remain seated. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. 
Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this
Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. As we prepare for the final blessing of this newly married couple in Christ, uh, after that we'll exit the building, the wedding party, but we'll come right back in for photos. You're welcome to leave and go over to the new parish hall, our old church, for the reception. If you're part of the family or part of the photo shoot, uh, you probably should stay around. The Lord be with you. Bow down now and pray for God's blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart and love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide in your home forever and ever. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration is ended. Let us go in peace. I present to you Darlene and Frank Fritz. Thank you. <laughs>